We know in a lot of cases that web servers are doing work, they're running computations, or they're running some sort of function when we retrieve our web page. They're not just picking up a document, they're taking, they're building the document using some information that's present on the website. I wanted to give it just a very, very simple example of this. Going into this, you know, is the subject of like a whole class, and there's a gazillion different ways to do this. Um, the history of server-side rendering is, is an old one. It goes back several decades. There's old ways to do it. There's new ways to do it. There's bad ways to do it. There's good ways to do it. Um, but the example I'm going to show has some common features. So um, let me show you an example of a, of a page that is clearly has some dynamic content in it. So here's an example page. And what you're going to see here is that random number 77, every time I reload this page, I'm going to get a new random number. So I got random 114, random 120. And what's happening here is that this has nothing to do with my request. The server is taking this page and rendering it to include this random number every time. So let's see an example of how this works. So there's a lots of different frameworks out there for building server-side uh, pages. This one was written uh, by one of my UTAs in a framework called Flask um, that's in Python. So this is now computer code. So you can see that rather than picking up a, a static document, we're actually going to run a function. And the function that we're going to run is right here. It's called in this file RAND. Um, and how, so how did the server know to run this function? Well, if you look up here, uh, you'll notice that the path is example slash random.html. And actually, all of these examples live under examples. So the, the web server stripped off the first part of it, and then it sent the request to this computer program. And the computer program, uh, and, and this code registers this uh, piece of code right here, app.route slash random.html. What that tells this particular uh, program is that when there's a request for random.html, you should run this function. And what does this function do? So what this fun the, the random number comes in right here. So this is Python code that generates a random integer between 0 and uh, 128. Um, not sure that's actually between 0 and 128. Um, Oh, okay, it looks like it is. That's good. So this generates a random number between 0 and 128. And then what it does is it calls this function called render template. And this is a very common pattern. So the first thing I need to do is I need to map the URL to a function that's going to run. Then what I do is I take a little bit of data. In this case, the only thing that's changing about the page is that random number, right? Everything else is the same. And so rather than building the whole page, what I do is I take the little bit that's changing and I pass it to this template called random.html. So let's look at what that template looks like. Here's the template. Um, it has the content for the page, so you can see this is the H1 dynamic content right here. This is the paragraph that's on the page, um, although web pages start outside of documents. Blah, blah. So this is all stuff about the page that's not changing. And then here's this one bit of the page that is changing. So it's random number, and what this template tells the program to do is insert the value of the random number that was calculated by that function into this spot on the page. So random number. Um, and this syntax says in this particular templating language, put the random number here. And you can see that that's what the page is doing. It's putting the random number there. And I'm glossing over a gazillion details here, but I'm just trying to get to hit the high points. So what's interesting though is you might notice that there's a lot of parts of the page that aren't shown here. Like where is the HTML declaration? Where's the, the header and things like that? Um, so the thing to note in this particular templating language, this template extends another template. And this is a common pattern where I use uh, one template that represents parts of the page, and then I have other templates fill in other pieces. So what this template is going to do, and I'm going to show you complex.html in a sec. So here's complex.html. This is a different template. Now this looks more like a full web document. It has a doc type declaration. It has an HTML declaration. It has a header. Um, this is where the bootstrap, CSS, and JavaScript that I'm using get pulled in, and jQuery, which is required by bootstrap. And then what this does is it sets up a container row. This is bootstrap stuff to figure out how wide things should be. And then there's this part right here, block body end block. If I go back to my first template, you can see that it says block body. And so what this does is it takes this content and it sticks it in to, whoop, 
sticks it into this page in this spot. Then once that's finished, now I have a complete web document that I can return to the client. And again, this is a very common paradigm. So let's just review what the three steps were. The first step was I need to map the URL in some way to a function. And remember, paths on the modern web are super, you know, they're, they're super freeform. I can do this however I want. I could have had this big complex.asp or something like that, or whenever. Just, I could have it just be slash complex. That's totally up to me. So I map the path to a function that's going to run. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. I was in random, random.html. I map the path to a function. I take a little bit of data, and then I build the page using these templates. In a lot of cases, that's done in this hierarchical way. So I build a part of the page, in this case, the, the uh, uh, body block, and then I stick that body block into this page. And once that's finished, I have a complete web document, and that's what actually gets returned to the client.